page and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. Now I don't know what it is about June. I don't know if it's because it's Pride Month and for some reason that just kind of gets me super motivated and excited but every, this year and I believe last year June is the year in which or is the month not the year the month in which I read the most books at least so far. This month I have read an eight books in total which accounts for 2,493 pages, one of which those 10 books was a graphic novel, one was a physical book, three were audiobooks, and the rest of them were ebooks. Now I only, I had four three stars and six four stars. So I would say that's actually a pretty good average. So I had no two or one stars and no five stars. Which, well said, I am fine with. So let's start with the three star books. The first three star books I really picked up on a whim. I heard Chelsea over at Chelsea Doling Reads talk about it. She read it for Smutathon. That is Misadventures of a Curvy Girl. Now, I don't remember what she rated it, but I think I rated it lower than she did, and that is just because I think I went into it with a bit different of an expectation. Um, just the way it was described was, it was, it was something like queer threesome, basically. Um, so there was two guys and a girl and they were all in a relationship together is the extent of what I understood. And so that's what I went into understanding and it was that kind of in a way, um, but it more focused on the two guys kind of more focusing on the female, which is fine. Um, but you don't really get to see the guys be in a relationship with each other as much or like you don't like they don't they talk a little bit but they never hold hands they never hug they never kiss they never they never fuck like you don't ever see that the only time they really have intimate interactions is when they are fucking her so that was kind of sad um, but the steamy parts in that are hot. So, I mean, if you're looking for some yummy steamy time, check it out. But just know that it's mostly, um, female male. The next two three star reads kind of were, are a part of a series. Um, the first one is called Catalyst and it is part of the Scientific Method series. The second one is um, called Unexpected Gifts. These are both by Chris Reaper, um, who is a non-binary author, which was really cool. I don't remember how I stumbled upon these. It might have been in recommendation after I read Misadventures of a Curvy Girl, or it could have been if I was looking for... I do know how. I was looking for Own Voices books to read, because um, I kind of got an Own Voices, major Own Voices kick after reading I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, which was the first book I read this month, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but the first one is, and this one was pretty steamy, so it's about this guy who has these just normal fine relationships with women and he always ends up breaking them off because they aren't satisfying him sexually and he thinks that he's broken or grosser like because he wants to be dominated and he thinks that he's wrong and his brother ends up finding his like porn history on their shared computer and confronts him about it and stages an intervention with a female dominatrix that he knows um and his brother kind of sets up a meeting with not the female dominatrix but the male one um even though he's straight i don't know why but um for scientific purposes just to like prove to himself that that's not what he wants and it it's obviously is what he wants and it just kind of continues from there it is pretty cute it's a really interesting take on non-traditional relationships um dealing with complicated feelings and relationships and I actually really enjoyed the first one. I liked the the second one a little bit less. I um, both gave them three stars. The second one focuses more on the main character in the first one. 
completely blanking on his first name. It was a while ago that I read them. I read them in like two days. Um, he goes off to college and gets a girlfriend. And why I remember her name, Molly, I, I don't know. Um, but I do. <laughs> um, but I don't know. They were both, they're just really cute and they're, Also, if you're looking for a hot, steamy, awesome, and there's like no weird power dynamics because this deals with um, BDSM, so if that's something you're worried about, there's no weird like, oh, he's his boss, like he always just has fantasies about it and he kind of goes into it just trying to figure things out, and so it's a really interesting take on it. And yeah, it was really... Now for my four star reads. The first one which was I Wish You All The Best by Mason Deaver. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year and let me tell you it was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Um, I can't tell you why I didn't give it a five star just okay I can tell you why it was and I, I talk about it a bit more I don't even know where I talk about it. I think I did a review of it. Yeah, I think I did a review of it. Why can't I remember what I did on my own channel? Um, <laughs> but it's just, it felt, and I do, like I said, I do think this was intentional, but it felt very muted to me, very stifled, and that's just because I feel like Ben, as a character, felt that way. Um, so it was very hard to kind of catch my breath and like very... It wasn't I was able to kind of live and enjoy the moment because Ben was constantly waiting for the last shoe to drop so I was constantly waiting for the last shoe to drop but I'm definitely excited to see what Mason Deaver comes up with next we'll definitely be checking what they write next my other four I mean the rest are all four star reads the other one is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray I was really surprised by this one um, I read this one for my book club and I honestly I had no idea what to expect going into this. Based on the cover I was expect I was had very low expectations just beca and just because of the cover and the title. Um but the it was so interesting. Now, I do have to say you have to go into this with an open mind. You have to suspend quite a bit of disbelief. I mean 50 like teen pageant stars are stranded on this island and are forced to survive and it is just very extra it is very hilarious it is highly satirical um it is very upfront about how condescending and kind of ridiculous at times the beauty community and the beauty industry in and of itself is um but kind of, that's kind of what the charm is of it and I enjoyed the heck out of this now the only reason that this did not get a five star for me is the ending was a little more so convoluted than the rest of the story now like I said the story in and of itself you have to suspend quite a bit of disbelief it is not living in our re reality which I read a lot of fantasy and I'm fine with doing um, but it was also a little confusing. There's like this big fight scene at the end and I don't know who's where and what's happening and the action is very confusing. I can't understand what's going on. So that made it a little less enjoyable for me. But if you want something that is pretty feminist at the heart and has really awesome rep I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, there's, I think a bi character, there is a trans character, there's a deaf character, there's a, I mean, and it's funny because they make sure to, on multiple occasions, point out that there is only one black and Indian character in the entire pageant and how, oh, that's not a source of discrimination or racism. Like, that's just blah, blah. It's, it's kind of like they poke fun at its own stereotypes that it's using. Um, but like, there's a whole bunch of wonderful... Um, sexuality present, different cultures present, there's a, I don't remember if I said a deaf character, um, but it has those stereotypes, but then it also breaks them down. It doesn't just, like in the beginning, it can, you can get really irritated because like it falls very much into those stereotypes, 
But the more you get into the book, the more it very much shows that those are all fronts that they put up because they are in this pageant where they have to be these perfect, smiling, awesome, perfect bodied robots. And I don't know. And listen to the audiobook. I don't care who you are, listen to the audiobook. You will thank yourself. The next four star read was um, Skin and Bones, the sequel to Bones to Pick. It is the second book in Digging Up the Bone series by T.A. Moore. Now this, I'm in love with this series. It follows this canine officer, Cloyster. Um, he and his dog, um, Bourneville, find lost people and bring them home. In this one, they find the lost person, but she's like in a coma or something, and they have to either find her family or whatever. Um, and he's once again forced to work with the FBI agent in town and like it also deals with his past and he is very much like a damaged human being and the FBI agent is a damaged human being and it's about how they help and hurt each other and it's just it's everything I like in like cop shows it's more about their relationships with each other with each other and other people than it is about the mystery but it is so good and it isn't super gruesome or anything like that if you're really worried um it is actually isn't too bad so i would highly recommend it it was another surprise for me this month was static by la wit i was just looking for a book to read uh listen to while at work and i borrowed it from the library i it was under science fiction lgbtq I think and I, I read the synopsis and I mean I was apprehensive about getting it um because it could have either been done really really well or horrifically wrong like there was certainly much middle ground it is about Alex who Alex lives in this world where people who are gender fluid actually have the physical ability to be able to switch genders so if Alex is feeling more feminine that day they can put they can become female if they are feeling more masculine they can become male um, and of course the world is one where a lot of people see that is wrong as a problem blah 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 and that's not to say that there aren't other sexualities because they're Alex is friends with um, someone who is transgender but they are what is called static and they don't have that ability to switch um and some of the shifters like they just switch to one gender and they stay that way some of them are more gender fluid alex is one of those um but alex has been in a long in a long-term relationship with another person and that person does not know that alex is a shifter and one day alex has a forced a surgery force on them where they are forced to get this inhibitor that is basically makes them static and makes them only one gender and it's about them becoming confident enough in themselves to fight back basically and figure out that they are worth fighting back and also trying to figure out their relationship with their significant other and I did a little bit of research about the author and from what I could tell this author was um, cis female and as far as I could tell also straight um, like I said I I don't like digging into people's privacy so I just looked on their social media accounts and just a few of their biographies on their websites and on Goodreads and what it posted there led me to believe that the author is cis female married to a man um that's not to say that they can't it can't be own voices but from what i can tell it wasn't um but it was still really well done it was still really interesting if that sounds interesting to you at all i would definitely check it out i missed a three-star read oops 
because I did say I have four and I only talked about three. The third, the fourth <laughs> three star read was um, Midnight and Apollo. It was a graphic novel I read. Um, it was fine. It was just about um, midnight. It's Midnighter in Apollo. I do think I read it. I don't remember why I read it. I probably saw it on someone for queer graphic novels and I picked it up. Um, it is kind of seems to be a continuation of another graphic novel but not like this isn't necessarily the second vol volume specifically but like there was a whole nother arc. I think it even like mentions that like Midnighter volume one and I think it would have made a bit more sense if I had read that first. Um, but that being said it I didn't feel like I also missed much. Um, it's just about Midnight and Apollo. Midnighter and Apollo, they are both superheroes. Midnighter has had some kind of scientific experiment done on them, um, where they basically are able to scientifically compute where it is the easiest to kill someone. And Apollo was abducted by aliens and turned into kind of like a demigod. And they are in a relationship together, and they have just gotten back together when the guy who did the experiments on Midnighter like somehow kills or captures or gets someone to capture Apollo and basically takes him to hell and Midnighter goes and gets him. It was really well done. Um, I'm finding that for graphic novels I just wish they were longer. Like it was 152 pages but I just could have done more with either like kind of right there at the ending when of course when all the big stuff happens. Um, so I don't know. But it was really entertaining, it was really well done, it was full color, it was gorgeous, and I would recommend it. And the last two four star reads, one was a reread for me, it is um, called Divi- Did so well with being able to speak through this video, and then I mess up. Um, Divide and Conquer, it is the fourth book in the Cut and Run series by Abigail Rowe and Madeline Urban. This is probably one of my favorite mystery, um, queer mystery. It f centers around two FBI agents, Ty Grady and Zane Garrett. And this one, they are, um, they work together at the FBI agent in, agency in Baltimore. And there's these like weird random bombings happening and they have to kind of figure them out. But at the same time, they're in a relationship together and they have to kind of figure out because the FBI has that, because they're also partners, like they work together as partners in the agency and then they're partners in real life. And the FBI has like no frater fraternization policy. So if it came out that they were lovers in real life, they would have to get new partners and so it's like them dealing with that but also dealing with bigger stressors and I love them so much. If you want some really badass, witty, asshole-ish, funny, mystery novels, definitely pick those up. And then the last four star read for me was actually a non-fiction book slash they kind of titled it themselves a uh, self-help book self-help book that is the hidden power of effing up by the try guys um i don't know if you guys have heard of the try guys i'd be kind of surprised if you haven't they used to work for buzzfeed and then they started their own company and then they just recently came up came out with a book and audiobook about these different their philosophy about just saying yes to new opportunities and always trying even if it means failing and failing a lot because it always teaches you things and it was just really interesting to kind of hear more about their life and the different road their life has taken as someone who had a pretty what I thought was a pretty well thought out determined path for my life and it has got, gone very far off course. It was just kind of really cool to hear that everyone's basically in their own, on their own path and in their own journey and wherever you are is in the right place where you're supposed to be and don't beat yourself up for not being where you think you should be um, 
and it was just it was also really funny because they kind of set some challenges for each other and tried new things failing and succeeding in some cases and they read the audiobook and that was always fun to see because they have some pretty great voices so but that was my month for june it was pretty awesome i think all but one book all but the hidden power of effing up was queer so that was really awesome for pride month um but that's really not all that different than what i normally read anyway so that's not to say that's super surprising um have you read any of these books that i read if you have what have you thought of them if you haven't have I made them sound interesting to you? Have I made you not want to read any of them? Um, or just stop in and say hi. But until the next video, ta-ta for now!